My name is Ralph Jurgensen. I own a Cajun restaurant down here in Louisiana, deep in the heart of the bayou. I have to tell you about something that happened last summer. Something that still haunts me. Something that makes me question whether I want to stay in the place I've called home my entire life. You see, we rely on fresh catches for our restaurant. Shrimp, crawdads, redfish, even the occasional alligator if we can snag one. To save money, we often go out on the bayou ourselves to do the fishing. This place is in my blood, the swamp's rhythm in my veins. But lately, there's been a darkness creeping in, something that makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. One day last summer, me and Sonny headed out to the bayou like we always do, loaded up with nets, a cooler, and a whole lot of hope. The sun was just peeking over the trees, casting shadows on the water. It was a morning like any other, or so I thought. We tossed the net a few times, the usual haul of catfish and bream. But then, something different caught the net. When we pulled it in, I nearly fell out of the boat. There, flopping around like caught fish, were four of the damnedest creatures I've ever seen. Small green things with eyes that glowed like hot coals. They looked like baby alligators, but something was off. Their heads were wrong too pointed, and their little teeth were like sharks. Damn gators, Sonny said, but I wasn't convinced. There was something primeval about them, like they was straight out of a nightmare. Before I could figure out what to do, I heard a sound from the shore, a screech like a banshee on crack. My heart skipped a beat. We turned towards the sound, and that's when I saw it. Standing there on the bank was a creature that looked like something out of a bad horror movie tall as a grown man, with skin the color of swamp water. Its legs was like a gator's, but it stood upright, and those arms, short and thick, with claws that looked like they could rip a man in half. Its head was the worst part, a mix of alligator and something else, something that shouldn't be. It let out another screech, and I could feel the blood drain from my face. That thing was pissed. It started charging towards us, crashing through the bushes like a freight train. I've seen gators, big ones, but nothing like this. Sonny's eyes were as big as saucers. He fumbled for his gun, but I grabbed his arm. Don't be stupid, I hissed. What the hell was a pistol gonna do against something like that? We were sitting ducks in that little boat. The thing was almost to the water's edge. Its eyes were locked on us, a green glow burning in the dark of them. I could hear its breathing, heavy and low, like a gator right before it strikes. I glanced at Sonny, and his face was as white as a ghost. Just as the thing was about to hit the water, I grabbed the net, still tangled with those freaky little creatures. I heaved it towards the shore, right at the big one. It was a long shot, but it was all I could think to do. The net hit with a splash, and for a second the thing tore it apart and was all tangled up. It roared, a sound that shook the bones in my body. Then it broke free, and that's when I knew we were in real trouble. That thing was pure rage, a green blur charging towards us. Sonny screamed and ducked down, but I just stared, my mind blank. I'd seen big gators. Hell, I'd wrestled a few in my time, but nothing like this. It was bigger, meaner, and something was totally off about it. I felt the boat rock as the creature hit the water. It was closer than I thought its eyes glinting in the morning light. I could see the muscle ripples under its scaly skin, and its teeth, like a row of broken daggers. I grabbed the oars, ready to try and get us out of there, but I knew it was too late. We were literally sitting ducks. Then before we could say crawdad, the beast was almost on us, its hot breath washing over the boat. I squeezed my eyes shut, expecting the worst. Then I heard a sound, a high-pitched squeal that made my ears ring. I opened my eyes just in time to see those little creatures we'd caught, the ones that looked like baby dinosaurs, swarming the big one. They were biting at its eyes, its legs, anywhere they could get a hold. The big creature thrashed and roared, but those little devils were relentless. It was a crazy, unbelievable sight. For a few precious seconds, the creature was distracted. I grabbed the oars and started rowing like a madman. Sonny came to his senses and joined in. We pulled away as fast as we could, the creature thrashing and roaring behind us. 
I glanced back once, and I'll never forget what I saw. The big beast was surrounded by those little creatures, a green scaly ball of chaos. I had no idea if the little ones were attaching the big one, or maybe they were its offspring. I don't know, and I really don't care. I just know we didn't stop rowing until we were halfway across the lake. When we finally caught our breath, we just sat there staring at each other. Neither of us said a word. We'd seen something that defied explanation, something that made you question your sanity. I don't know what those things were or where they came from, but I do know one thing. I'm never going back out there again, not ever. Hey Donovan, I've been tuning into your channel frequently these past few weeks, finding distraction in your content during a challenging time in my life. My beloved golden retriever, Max, who had been my loyal companion for over a decade, recently passed away. The loss hit me hard, leaving a void in my daily routine in my heart. Your channel has been a welcome distraction, helping me navigate through the waves of grief. I can't express how much I appreciate the distraction it's provided. In the midst of all this emotional stuff, my girlfriend Elizabeth suggested we needed a change of scenery. She's always been the more adventurous one in our relationship, constantly seeking new experiences. I, on the other hand, tend to find comfort in familiarity and routine. However, recognizing my need for a distraction, I agreed that a short getaway might do us both some good. Initially, I proposed a weekend at a nice restaurant in Minneapolis or a peaceful day trip to one of Minnesota's many beautiful state parks. Elizabeth, however, had grander ideas. After some back and forth, we settled on a compromise, a guided four-day camping trip to Theodore Roosevelt National Park in North Dakota. The destination seemed to strike a balance between Elizabeth's desire for adventure and my preference for structure. Plus, at just about a six-hour drive from our home west of St. Paul, it felt manageable for a first-time camping experience. In the days leading up to our trip, we immersed ourselves in preparation. We visited our local REI store, where we invested in a spacious four-person tent, two cozy sleeping bags rated for the chilly North Dakota nights, and a compact camping stove. Elizabeth insisted on bringing a large cooler, which I initially thought was excessive but later appreciated. We packed it with an assortment of foods, sandwich materials, fruits, vegetables, and even some pre-marinated chicken for grilling. The morning of our departure, we loaded up my trusty Subaru Outback. The car was filled to the brim with our new camping gear, clothes for various weather conditions, and more snacks than we probably needed. We debated bringing our other dog, a spirited Jack Russell named Buddy, but ultimately decided to leave him with Elizabeth's mom. We figured navigating our first camping trip would be challenging enough without adding a hyperactive terrier to the mix. We just needed to stop for gas, and as luck would have it, I stumbled upon a hilarious scene at the gas station. Two women were in line in front of me, and one was going on and on about wanting frozen dinners. The other one, without missing a beat, started critiquing her weight and suggesting salads instead. It was like watching a live comedy sketch. Weird, but sort of sad too. Anyway, I digress. We arrived at the campsite as the sun was starting to set. Our tent was pretty big, and we had plenty of room for our stuff. Sam, our guide, was super helpful getting us settled, and even helped us start a fire. He was a really cool guy, and we ended up chatting for a while about base fishing and other stuff. The whole experience was worth the money, definitely. After Sam left, we made dinner and listened to some music before heading to bed. In the middle of the night, I woke up needing to use the bathroom. I headed towards a nearby tree, and as I was about to relieve myself, I saw something that absolutely freaked me out. A tall, incredibly hairy figure just sprinted past me through the woods. I jumped, startled, and ran back to the campsite to grab my phone, hoping to catch a glimpse of whatever it was. But when I returned to the spot, there was no sign of anything. I couldn't stop wondering if I had really seen something so I decided to go back into the woods and investigate. I looked for footprints, checked the trees for any signs of hair, and even moved a few branches around. But I didn't find anything. I mean, I don't know if it was Bigfoot or what, but it was definitely something unusual. When I got back to the campsite, I wanted to tell my girlfriend right away, 
but she was sound asleep. I tried to go back to sleep, but my mind was racing. I kept replaying the scene over and over, trying to figure out what I had seen. The next morning, I couldn't wait to tell my girlfriend about my encounter. She was so disappointed she missed it. Later, I told one of my friends, who just laughed and said I was crazy for not taking any pictures. But seriously, this thing was huge and incredibly hairy. I've never seen anything like it. Even now, a week later, I still think about it sometimes. I mean, what are the chances of seeing something like that? It's like something out of a movie. Oh, and I almost forgot to tell you about this other weird thing that happened. A few days ago, I was driving home from work and saw what I thought was a deer. But when I got closer, I realized something was off. Its face looked like a skull, and it was definitely alive and moving. I don't know what it was, but it was definitely creepy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my story. Let me know what you think. Midway through the year of 2010, I began hanging out again with my high school friend, Ian. We had dated in the past and were now just friends, but I kept thinking it would turn into more again, so I was really putting in the time to see him as much as possible. I was living in Minneapolis at the time, and I was making weekend trips over to visit him every few weeks or so in St. Cloud, nearly always ending up spending most of the day on Sunday, hanging out till the last minute, and then I would be driving back home late at night. After one such weekend getaway, it had started raining while I was driving back, and the roads were glistening from the rain, and visibility was tough. My eyes were definitely tired and glassy when I finally got to my exit, and I kept having to blink them to focus the last few miles home. Finally, I pulled into my apartment complex just after 11 p.m. and parked in my parking spot next to the wall that butts up against the highway. I turned my car off, grabbed my black and gray striped umbrella, and headed towards my apartment and the sidewalk to my front door, pulling my small wheeled suitcase in tow. About halfway to my door, I realized that I might have forgotten my wallet on the seat of the car, since I had to take it out to pay tolls. I turned around and took a few steps back towards my car, frustrated that I had to go back in the rain. I was also thinking about how late it was and how cold it still was, when suddenly something ran out in front of me, across my path and blocked me. I froze dead in my tracks. I didn't know what it was at first, and I was petrified as I stood there listening to its heavy breathing and moans. The rain was coming down harder now, and I was blinking through it trying to focus on what this thing was. It was also standing right between me and a streetlight, which backlit the thing, making it hard to see more than its silhouette. What I do know is that standing in front of me was the most insane thing I have ever seen. It was between seven, nine feet tall, massive, with dark fur all over its body. It had two arms like an ape, and when it stood up, the best way I can describe its face is that it looked like a cross between a monkey and human, with deep set eyes and very long fingers. The outline of its body was similar to the shape of a human and it stood there on its two back legs that seemed bent in a crazy position with its hands hanging at its sides, nonchalantly blocking the path back to my car and sniffing around in the air. It was so strange because I don't even know if it knew I was there, by the way, it just kept swinging its head around and sniffing, and it didn't care one bit that it was getting soaked. It didn't look uncomfortable at all. I stood there wide-eyed as this thing seemed to not have a care in the world but somehow wanted to block me, toy with me. After a very short time, it let out a deep growl and slowly brought its arms up to the front of its chest, looked me right in the eyes and then let out a long, bone-chilling screech, which snapped me back to reality. I screamed back at it, and I have no idea why I did this, but I dropped my suitcase and started waving my arms wildly at it. I think I reacted as if it was a bear, which is something most people from Minnesota know how to do if they encounter one. It's almost like my brain calculated that this huge beast was a bear and instinctively made me act as if it was. And then I started shouting. I don't remember what I shouted at it, but I do recall yelling, back up, go away, over and over. I wasn't sure if it could understand words, but as soon as those came out of my mouth, both of its arms dropped to its side and it turned quickly as if someone had said the magic word. 
but a magic word that sent it into a fit of rage as its face contorted and twisted. After more screaming and hissing on its part, it galloped off into the darkness between two buildings across from me making this god-awful sound like nothing I've ever heard before. And all I can say is that we don't have anything here in Minnesota that's even remotely similar to this sound. And I can't really describe it other than saying it made every hair on my body stand up straight and made me feel sick to my stomach. I've never had a feeling like that before, and I don't think I will ever forget it as long as I live. As soon as it was gone, the chills went up and down my spine, and not knowing if it would come running back at any second out of pure fear, adrenaline kicked in, and I bolted towards my apartment building. I ran as fast as I could, reached the door, and then turned and looked, watching the space where it had run off to, and slammed the door behind me. I made it inside and locked all three deadbolts before my knees buckled, and I collapsed on the floor as the sobs came out of me for what felt like an hour straight. After a bunch of crying, I told myself to get it together, and I headed over to the computer to try and figure out what had just happened, what I had just seen. It was late, but there was no way I would be able to fall asleep. My body was still pumping adrenaline like crazy. I sat down at the computer and typed the words, hairy animal that stands on back legs, and up popped, immediately, the word dog man in a detailed description. The dog man is an upright walking, short-haired, muscular creature that stands on its back legs, sometimes with the palms of its hands facing forward. It has a dog or wolf-like head and long canine teeth which are larger than a normal human being's. They have been known to kill both animals and humans for no apparent reason, Although it is highly unlikely, they walk very fluidly on their back legs with good speed, and a horrible smell may accompany it. But I sat there staring at the screen in shock. I feel it was a miracle that it never touched me or hurt me, and that it just headed off after scaring the crap out of me. Ian and I talked about it, and he told me to keep it to myself, as he didn't want anyone thinking I was crazy. I'm so glad that he believes me, though. If you were there, you would certainly think so, too. There's just no way to deny it. But to be clear, there was nothing positive about the encounter, and it's still very real and raw to me, even though it's been over 12 years. It was a scary night for sure, and I would love to tell you that I haven't gone outside after dark since then, but that's totally impossible. What I can tell you, though, is that I now always carry a can of mace, and I've never again forgotten to check for my wallet before getting out of the car. Ranger Ben Harris was on routine patrol in the sprawling expanse of the San Juan National Forest in southwest Colorado. It was mid-October, and the high country was already draped in early winter's flurries. As he drove his ATV along the rough Forest Service road, the sky was gray, and snow flurries were beginning to drift down. He was used to the Weminouche wilderness. Its moods could shift from serene to savage in a heartbeat and its secrets were as deep as the canyons it carved. But what he saw that October day was something different, something that made the hair on the back of his neck stand up. It was a routine patrol, the kind he'd done a hundred times. He was winding his ATV along a familiar trail when he saw it. At first, he thought it was a bear, but as he got closer, his blood turned to ice. It was standing on two legs, towering over the undergrowth, its body was roughly humanoid in shape, but with an unnatural, elongated torso and disproportionately long limbs. The skin was dark, almost jet black, and seemed to absorb the fading light. Its head was an oddity, small and round with no discernible neck. The eyes were large, black orbs that seemed to glow in the twilight, devoid of any pupil or iris. A sense of wrongness washed over him. There was something profoundly unsettling about the creature's proportions and the way it moved. Its gait was fluid yet deliberate, with a haunting silence that contrasted the crunch of leaves beneath his ATV tires. As it turned its head towards him, he saw that its mouth was a thin, lipless slit that stretched across its face. Panic started to set in, but he forced himself to stay calm. He reached for his radio, his fingers trembling. As he fumbled with the device, the creature turned its head towards him. Its gaze was fixed, and for a moment, 
He felt like he was the one being hunted. He revved the ATV, the engine roaring in the quiet of the wilderness. The creature didn't flinch. It just stood there, watching him. Fear, raw and primal, surged through him. He backed up, turned the ATV around, and gunned it. As he looked back, he saw the creature standing motionless, its dark silhouette fading into the twilight. Back at the ranger station, he tried to explain what he'd seen. His colleagues were skeptical, but there was a flicker of concern in their eyes. He called in a wildlife biologist, but even the expert was stumped. It wasn't a bear, a moose, or any other known creature. Days later, he returned to the spot. The snow had melted, revealing strange tracks in the mud. They were huge with five long curved marks. No bear, no cougar, no animal he could think of made tracks like that. They were deep, suggesting a creature of considerable weight. He took pictures and measurements, sending them to anyone who might know something. Cryptozoologists, paleontologists, even a few fringe scientists weighed in with theories, but nothing concrete. The experience had changed him. The wilderness, once a place of solace, now held an undercurrent of fear. Every rustle in the bushes made him jump. He couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. And those tracks? They were a constant reminder that something out there didn't belong. 